Hello, 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 everybody. In this video, we're going to look at some new news about Stonehenge, which has just come out saying that it is older than humans. And we're going to look at why it's older than humans, why I think it's older than humans, and why they got it wrong, because that's what we always think, that they got it wrong. So the archaeologist says parts of Stonehenge were there long before any humans. And he's actually saying, and I didn't know this, I've been studying Stonehenge my whole life, He's saying that the heel stone, and shout out to uh, sciencealert.com, uh, he's saying this heel stone was essentially uh, originally buried in a hole nearby, which is six meters in diameter. Six meters in diameter. So that the stones of Stonehenge have always, therefore the stones of Stonehenge have always been here, always been here. Now, this is actually not a new theory. Although it is being presented as a as a new theory, I suppose, but it, 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 the speculation goes back a while. This is a, this is a new a new way of putting it. It's it's quite amazing. Traditionally, the assumption had been that thousands of Stonehenge had come from Marlborough Downs. Now, let's look at why this is all uh, this is all a bit wrong, and let's look at what what is perhaps really happening. Now, if we look at Stonehenge, I mentioned in a video a while back that. These stones couldn't have been brought from anywhere, and the evidence is right in front of you. If you examine them, you will see that they are unevenly shaped. Now, it, d does it make any sense to you that the, that the stones would, would be brought from 20 or 30 miles away, and then they didn't bother to, to, to shape them? I mean, shaping them would only be 1% of the effort of actually bringing them over. So does that make any sense at all? It doesn't make any sense. So therefore, the stones have always been here. And it also appears that Stonehenge is far better astronomically aligned than it is shaped. In other words, these stones were probably shaped by someone else and just reused by astronomers to create a beautiful, beautiful monument. And of course, there is some evidence that stones, more evidence that the stones have always been here. One, two, three. There are three Megalith uh, Mesolithic post holes. These go back to 9000 BC, about the age of Gebekli Tepe. This was a monument in the time of Gebekli Tepe. There were three enormous totem poles or something here. We don't know. But as you can see, only the holes remain. We don't know what was in them. Obviously, they've been, the stones or whatever have been shifted around. That is quite clear. I'm not sure if this car park is even still here, thanks to that beautiful monorail they built nearby to decorate Stonehenge. And of course, we're talking about the heel stone itself, and the heel stone was unshaped. Uh, the archaeologist in that article does speculate that uh, the heel stone was already facing the summer solstice when it was in the ground. They decided to upright it and pl plonk it here, thus creating Stonehenge. And this was the inspiration for Stonehenge. Now, I cannot agree. I just cannot agree with that. Yes, there, there might have been uh, some uh, indigenous stone to the area, but I, do you know what? I think it's all artificial stone. I think it's all geopolymer. I think this heel stone, the reason it's unshaped, this was a slag heap, and they were mixing cement here where the heel stone was in that six-meter diameter hole. They were just mixing cement up, and, uh, you know, 70,000 years ago, and then the Stone Age people came along. After all the super catastrophes, the civilization was absolutely destroyed, wiped out, and they uprighted this thing, and they said, oh, that, we'll call that the heel stone, basically. And all the other stones were here and already already shaped. The reason they're so rough is is they're, they're basically poured cement. I mean, there's, there's no other... And I'm going to prove it in this video. I mean, I mean, it's so easy to prove. And it's actually uh, Leon Stover, if you look into his books, you know, in the pre-YouTube, you just had to read a book, I guess, and I, I still love to read books. Leon Stover actually said that, he actually quoted geology rep reports of the 1920s saying that the stones could well have been in place and because this sort of sarsen stone is indigenous to the area. Now, of course, sarsen means Saracen, which means someone from North Africa, which means the ancient giants from Libya that Geoffrey of Monmouth talked about. The ancient giants arrived, they played around with the stones, they brought more stones from Ireland, I think just the blue stones, which were mined in Wales, then taken to Ireland, then brought back from Ireland to here. 
And of course, if you look up what sarsen actually is, they say it's a very, very hard natural cement, which is amazing. And Leon Stover wrote a more recent book. He's dead now, but this was in 2003, Stonehenge City. He re- re- reiterates the same arguments. The stones were uh, always uh, always on the plane. He thinks it was actually a, a type of Danish parliament, and that's what the Stonehenge was. But of course, here is the, uh, the evidence uh, that the stones were always there. You look at something like uh, Cadbury uh, Castle, uh, Glastonbury, uh, all these places, they're all lined up because they've all, they're all recycled. This is an Anunnaki superhighway from, you know, maybe 100,000 years ago. They bisected England east-west as best they could, and then they bisected it north-south as best they could. They used calculus, they used all sorts of mathematics to uh, build the road in the most efficient place for the exploitation of England uh, uh, perhaps during colder temperatures, it might have been an ice age, but of course there were warmer temperatures between 120,000 and 70,000 BC, or 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 or, or a bit more further off in time, 120,000 to about 90,000 BC. I think that's when the super civilization was. And all these stones, all these relics, are just bits and pieces of buildings along this super highway from ancient times. For example, they didn't bring the Rollwright stones; they were already there. Oh, they didn't bring uh, Stratford, that was already there. They didn't bring uh, the Devil's Bridge, that was already there. The Carsten Bridge was already there. Uh, all these hills. Uh, Edinburgh, that was, uh, that was built out of recycled, uh, recycled rubble. Um, every, everything was built out of recycled rubble from the, 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 the previous super civilization. And you can see how cleanly the ancient giants bisected Britain along these ancient roadways. In fact, if you were to dig down here, you would find these ancient roads. There's no doubt about it, because there's no other reason for these lines to have been plotted on a map to even exist. People wouldn't have noticed them. I mean, it's as simple as that. The 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 Lupin Stains, that, that's a Scottish word for stones, castle. I mean, there's, there's, they, they even built a, an abbey out of recycled stones. We, all, we know how long stones last. They last forever, but they're just quarried endlessly. And it goes to Europe, the Anunnaki Superhighway, right across the Ice Age, uh, the Ice Age Europe. It goes all the way to Armageddon, and this was remembered in the Bible as uh, as uh, something at the end of the road. They called it the war at the end of time instead. And of course, this is the proof. Norman Lockyer uh, came up with this. A brilliant, brilliant, brilliant man. He wrote a book, two books that the archaeologists could not understand and therefore ignored. This is n- not quite accurate. One of these is off a little bit in reality, but he's made it more perfect. And he's showing that there's a 6666 mile uh, radii of a circle uh, based around Old Sarum, which is, of course, possibly Atlantis. So this would have all been a huge uh, walled off area. A huge walled off area. And Stonehenge, Groverly Castle, Clearbury. Maybe something over here, and there, there are undiscovered structures over here, here, and here, which would have been the old walls of the walls of some superstructure. And I've speculated the superstructure was, of course, something which was three times the size of CERN. It was basically a, 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 a type of enormous cyclotron or synchrotron. And this is what the ancients would have used to uh, help uh, discover atomic theory and create nuclear weapons. In fact, why do we have atomic theory in the first place uh, in the classical era of Greece? They must have inherited it from previous, previous knowledge. How did they know about atoms in the first place? I mean, I mean d- doesn't that uh, beg a question? So you can actually superimpose a huge synchrotron over, over what's going on here. And of course, the memory of the ancient giants having built it. Well, who were the ancient giants? The, the, ones who, the ones who built not just Stonehenge, but the whole damn thing. The whole damn complex. And of course, Atlantis is described as, uh, as, as ringed, ringed structures. But if you actually read it properly, there are actually rings around a hill. That's what it says. And uh, this was brought to my attention by a, a friend, Tina Silva, a good friend. And, y- y- you know, this is quite interesting. Uh, this, is, this is Atlantis. I mean, I mean th- these are rings around a hill. This is the, the sacred grove of Poseidon. These are some further rings, further rings. Uh, I mean, all these churches, everything was built out of stones of Atlantis. And this old Sarum is, of course, at the center of... Of this huge structure. So six miles away would have been the wall around Atlantis. So Stonehenge, all these were bastion fortresses. So what happened was, you had ancient giants 70,000 years ago building a cyclotron here. 
Then in the Stone Ages, uh, the Atlanteans arrived from Europe or wherever with their, their archery and all their chariots and everything, and they conquered the area, and they used, used all the, the, the remnants of the ancient ruins as their capital, and it looked like high technology because that's essentially the people who built the damn thing. And you had all this perfection and canals, but everything was already here. The, the Atlanteans just inherited the damn thing. I mean, how good is this? This is amazing. And it would have been, it would have been more circular in ancient times, more perfect. It's just changed over time with erosion or whatever. Well, guys, I think that's what really happened. And I think that's why they're saying that... Uh, Stonehenge is is well that look that's one reason they're saying Stonehenge is pre-human it really is uh, it really does go back I think at least tens and tens and tens of thousands of years the 20th century or 19th century theory that the Sarsans were brought here uh, from somewhere else uh, it's garbage they're too they're, they're too big to, uh, for Stone Age people to draw it, it's quite simple. Now, my book is available. It does talk about the Anunnaki and the Nephilim. The Kindle version is out, $3. Now, look, I made it $3 so that I could get lots of reviews. That's why I did it, and so you could read it. So I'm not just talking about something that no one can buy. So this does describe, uh, this is definitive proof. This is the proof of, of, an, of ancient, just ancient uh, warfare tens of thousands of years ago in an ancient super civilization on Earth. And uh, I would appreciate a review. That would be awesome. And I've got another proposal as well. If you have a blog, a, a fairly decent-sized blog, which gets comments, or if you have a YouTube channel, decent-sized YouTube channel, and you want to review this book, I can get the book out to you in exchange. I think that's a fair exchange, and, and it, it does cost a bit to send it out, but that's okay. Uh, I think that would be awesome. And, uh, well, get ready for another video. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. I do appreciate all the viewers I'm getting, all the views, all the subscribers. I, I really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are wonderful. And catch you next time. Bye-bye.